even though they have never won the World Cup, the Netherlands are constantly thought of as being one of football's all-time greatest nations, up there with the likes of Brazil, Germany and Italy, for example. And rightfully so, having played in three World Cup finals, as well as winning a UEFA Euro title in 1988. Netherlands constantly produce world-class players that play for the best teams in the world, even though they have been on decline within recent years. They are commonly thought of as being a historical footballing powerhouse since many decades back, which, while partially true, doesn't tell the entire story. The Netherlands made their first World Cup final appearance in 1974, but before that, they hadn't played in a World Cup since 1938, where they were knocked out in the round of 16 against Czechoslovakia. As recent as in their qualification campaign for the World Cup before the 74 edition, they finished third in their qualification group, behind Bulgaria and Poland. And although those two teams are strong, especially during that time, it is an unbelievable transition to go from finishing third in your qualification group to reaching a World Cup final, especially when you have not played in a World Cup for 36 years. In qualification for the 1966 World Cup, they also finished third, this time behind Switzerland and Northern Ireland. In 1962, they finished second in their qualification group, and only managed to obtain a measly two points, as opposed to the group winner Hungary's seven points. Hungary had a really good team back then, and you cannot blame the Netherlands for failing to defeat them. But when you take the massive point margin into account, it can still be considered a massive failure for the Netherlands. Same thing happened during 1958 qualification, finishing second, this time behind Austria. And for the 1954 and 1950 World Cup qualifications, the Netherlands did not even enter. In summary, the World Cup history of the Netherlands was exceptionally underwhelming prior to 1974, but it was certainly worth the wait, as they graced the footballing world stage with some of the best football that had ever been played. They started off their campaign with a comfortable 2-0 win over Uruguay. This impressive win was followed by a 0-0 draw against Sweden, and after destroying Bulgaria 4-1, they deservedly won the group. For the 1974 World Cup, a slightly different format was used. Rather than a group stage followed by a knockout stage, the tournament consisted of two group stages, and with the four best teams, when the second group stage was concluded, advancing to the knockout stage. In the second group stage, the Netherlands ended up in a very competitive group, consisting of Argentina, East Germany and Brazil but they did even better during the second group stage than they did in the first group stage phase, picking up three straight wins without conceding a single goal. 4-0 against Argentina, 2-0 against East Germany, 2-0 against Brazil. They won the group and as a result, they qualified for the World Cup final, their first ever. West Germany were their opponents. West Germany's way to the final had also been relatively straightforward. The only game they failed to win being a 1-0 loss to East Germany. Ahead of the final, there was no clear favorite. Both the Netherlands and West Germany had convincing tournaments, and the game could be won by either. It was a final of two footballing titans, Franz Beckenbauer and Johan Cruyff. Both teams possessed world-class squads though, and were certainly not one-man army teams. The Netherlands got the perfect start, taking the lead in the second minute through a Johan Nieskens penalty. But 23 minutes later, it was West Germany's turn to be awarded a penalty. Paul Breitner managed to convert and the score was now 1-1. West Germany started pushing hard to obtain a lead in front of their home crowd in Munich, and in the 43rd minute, they did so through German legend Gerd Müller. West Germany managed to see it out to the end and won their second ever World Cup title. The Netherlands could still head out of the World Cup with their heads held up high though, essentially reaching a World Cup final from out of nowhere, with no real prior footballing pedigree. Most of that squad was intact after the tournament, and the Netherlands set their eyes on the 1976 Euros. At the time, it was a four-team competition, and sadly the Netherlands were knocked out in their very first game to Czechoslovakia, who would go on and win the entire tournament. The Netherlands did not go home empty-handed though, defeating Yugoslavia in the third place playoff. But still, they had been the clear favorite to win the entire tournament, and being knocked out by Czechoslovakia, even though it was a very strong Czechoslovakian side, 
was a major disappointment for them. The Netherlands kept their heads held up high heading into qualification for the 1978 World Cup. And qualification was no hassle for them. They went undefeated, only drawing one game. At the World Cup itself, the Netherlands got just the start they had hoped for, breezing past Iran 3-0. However, things became harder for them in their second and third game, drawing 0-0 with Peru and losing 3-2 to Scotland. Still though, they had obtained enough points to advance to the second group stage. It was here where they truly awoken and started impressing like they had done at the previous World Cup. They destroyed Austria 5-1, drew 2-2 with West Germany and defeated Italy 2-1 to secure their place in yet another World Cup final. Their opponents were the highly controversial hosts Argentina. Just two years earlier they had suffered from a military coup and were a nation in political turmoil. Because of this many nations, including the Netherlands, had considered not even taking part in this World Cup. Yet here they were playing against them in the final. Even if you overlook the political turmoil in Argentina, their way to the final was equally, if not more, controversial. Argentina were given constant unfair refereeing decisions that favored them. This has led many to consider Argentina's triumph at this World Cup as illegitimate. The government wanted to make sure Argentina won that World Cup by any means necessary. The build-up to the final was also controversial. Argentina were accused of stalling, failing to show up on time. But five minutes later, they arrived and the final could begin. The match itself was plagued by hostility from the crowd and foul play. In the 38th minute, Argentina took the lead through the tournament's top scorer, Mario Campos. The Netherlands pushed for an equalizer and finally found it in the 88th minute, when John Niskens' cross found substitute Snaninga. The game went into extra time. This proved to be Mario Campos and Argentina's game. In the 105th minute, Mario Campos gave Argentina a 2-1 lead, and Daniel Bertoni added a third later for good measure. Argentina came out victorious 3-1. This was especially detrimental for the Netherlands. Not only the fact that they lost two World Cup finals in a row, but also that they had lost to such a controversial team, whom, according to many, shouldn't even have been in the final to begin with. Still though, two World Cup final appearances is an amazing achievement. After the final, many Dutch players quit, and the Netherlands became a much weaker team. In the 1980 Euros, they were eliminated in the group stage and they failed to qualify for a single major tournament until the 1988 Euros. However, the wait proved to be worth it, as they would be here they arguably experienced their greatest ever success. The tournament started off poorly for the Dutch, losing 1-0 to the Soviet Union. The tides turned in their second game though, where they beat England 3-1. After their narrow 1-0 win against the Republic of Ireland, they had secured their place in the knockout stage. In the semi-finals, the Netherlands were given an opportunity to extract revenge on the team that had beaten them in the 1974 World Cup final, West Germany. In 1974, West Germany won 2-1 after the Netherlands took a lead to a penalty. This time, it was the Netherlands' turn. West Germany took the lead in the 55th minute through a Lothar Matthäus penalty, but the Netherlands fought back and managed to turn the game around and win 2-1. The same team they had lost to in the group stage awaited the Netherlands in the final, the Soviet Union. But this time it was an entirely different story. The Netherlands won relatively comfortably 2-0, one of the goals going down in history as one of the world's greatest ever. A volley from an impossible angle by Marco van Basten. The Netherlands exercised some of their 1974 and 1978 demons by finally winning a major tournament but that elusive World Cup title still haunted them. It would take the Netherlands 22 more years since after winning their Euro title before they made an appearance in a World Cup final again. During the time between their 1988 Euro title and 2010 World Cup final appearance, they only made it past the quarterfinals at the World Cup on one occasion, the 1998 edition, as well as three UEFA Euro semi-final appearances. They had not been bad, but they had failed to replicate their massive success at the 1974 and 78 World Cups, as well as the 1988 Euro. That was until the 2010 World Cup, that is. The Netherlands would finally be given another opportunity to win football's greatest prize. They soared through their qualification group, winning all eight of their games whilst only conceding two goals, and came to the World Cup with the biggest hopes they had had in a long time. 
this amazing consistency persisted when the World Cup itself started and won all of their group games as well. 2-0 against Denmark, 1-0 against Japan and 2-1 against Cameroon. In the round of 16, they fought off Slovakia with relative ease, achieving yet another 2-1 win. Their quarterfinal game was their first game of the tournament, where they were not the clear favorites to win. Brazil was the opposition. Things couldn't have started off much worse for the Netherlands, as Brazil took an early lead in the 10th minute after a long and inviting pass found its way to Robinho, who converted it with great composure. Brazil maintained their advantage through the remainder of the first half, and had it not been for the heroics of Dutch goalkeeper Martin Stecklenburg, Brazil would have likely extended their lead. But the first half ended with Brazil being 1-0 up. It was an entirely revitalized Dutch team that came back after half-time, and after 8 minutes had passed, Wesley Snyder found the back of the net with a very fortunate strike that was likely just meant as a pass. Nonetheless, the game was now even at 1-1. The game went on, and in the 68th minute, Snyder scored yet again to win the game 2-1. The Netherlands had made it to a World Cup semi-final for the first time since 1998, where they were knocked out on penalties by Brazil. Just like in 1998, their opposition was also a South American team, but not Brazil. It was Uruguay. They took an early lead in the 18th minute with a stunning strike from the Dutch captain Giovanni van Bronckhorst. Shortly before the end of the first half, the tournament's best player Diego Forlan equalized for Uruguay. When the second half started though, the Netherlands gradually became better until they took a 2-1 lead in the 70th minute when Wesley Schneider scored his fifth goal of the tournament. Robin added a third three minutes later, and despite Uruguay scoring a constellation goal in the 92nd minute, it was a relatively comfortable win for the Dutch. They had made it to a World Cup final for the first time in 36 years and they were gonna play against the team who were making their World Cup final debut, Spain. The game was a close encounter that could have been won by either team, most notably Robin's opportunity in the 62nd minute where he ended up 1-on-1 -on -one against Casillas, but had his shot saved was a major opportunity for the Dutch to win the game. But this was not meant to be. This was the dirtiest World Cup final of all time, with a total of 15 cards being dealt out, surprisingly only one of which were red. It was a different Dutch team that was playing a different type of football than the football they played in the previous two finals. Spain weren't fault free, but the Dutch were dirtier than the world had ever witnessed in a World Cup final before. Despite this, the game was a close encounter to the very last second, with both teams creating good chances. That was until the 116th minute though, when the game was closing in on a penalty shootout, Jesus Nava started sprinting into opposing territory and began a series of passes that eventually led to the ball appearing in front of Andres Iniesta who scored a convincing half volley. Spain had won their first ever World Cup title, and according to most people, they won it deservedly. For the Netherlands though, it was yet another bitter final loss, their third. They have the unflattering record of being the team to have played in the most World Cup finals without ever winning. Despite the fact that the Netherlands have never won the World Cup, they are one of the world's all-time football giants, still seeking redemption after their three final losses to date. There's little doubt in my mind that the Netherlands will win within the next 50 years, probably earlier. The Netherlands have never been the greatest, but they have certainly been one of the greatest of all time.